Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Today we're going to look at the upcoming games but we're going to try and do it on time this week. We were a little bit late last week and there are some decent titles in here. Yeah, we've got a couple of big hitters, a few decent looking indie games and a couple of, um, well, let's find out, shall we? Okay, so the first game out, and we might as well do it in order of release, we have Anode, which is out on the 17th, a £3 Tetris-like experience. Yeah, I don't mind games like this. It's for three quid. You can't go wrong, can you? It's got chain reactions. Looks a bit more Puyo Puyo than Tetris, to be fair. But yeah, for three quid, I'd probably pick this up. Lovely. The next game is called Far Loan Sales. It was released a little earlier in the month on other platforms and comes out on the Switch on the 18th. Now this is a very interesting game. It's won a few awards in its time. It's a side-scrolling, almost a walking simulator where you have to maintain a vehicle that you pick up early on. It's a post-apocalyptic world and much of your time is spent refueling your ship and then just progressing through it. It's got a lovely art style. It really is a very relaxing game to play. I had hoped to review this one, but we're gonna stick it in our buy and avoid list that's coming up soon, so you can go over there and find out if it's any good. Right, next game then is called Invert, and from the look of the blurb on the eShop, it would appear to be a Super Meat Boy-esque platformer, I would say, with a very retro, almost Atari 2600 art style. Now, anyone that watches the channel will probably know by now, I don't like these sort of hardcore platformers. Call me a wimp if you want, I don't care. I'll hand over to Mark, because he's a glutton for punishment. I'll hand over to Mark, because he's better at these <laughs> than me. He's a wimp, isn't he? Fair play. Now, this is only £4.49, and it is exactly what Glenn said. It's one of those ridiculous, there is a name for these. There's something like, um, it's something about them being like frustration based. You let us know down in the comments. There is a special name for these frustrating platformers. It doesn't have multiplayer like Super Meat Boy does, but for £4.49, you want something else? Might be worth picking up. Next game then is Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. I know absolutely nothing of Yu-Gi-Oh! so I can't really comment on this. This is a trading card game with over 9,000 cards according to the blurb. Any fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! do let us know, would this be worth picking up? Do you need to know about the series to enjoy it? Yeah, I'd say anything like this, just like we had with the Dragon Ball Z game, has a big following. The asking price at £40 is a little bit steep, but yeah, I'm guessing there's going to be a few people in the comments that say, oh, it's an absolutely brilliant game, and that's great. One to check out for fans of the series. The next game is Oninaki from Square Enix. This is the third in a series of RPGs from the Tokyo RPG Factory. Yeah, so this follows on from Iron Setsuna and uh, Lost Sphere, wasn't it, was the other one. I've been currently reviewing this for Square, which I never thought I'd say. Unbelievable. Right, next up we have a game called Lions Infinite, which is about £1.79 but has 50% off at launch. It looks very much like one of those mini games you'd find in other games where you have to match the wires up to stop a bomb from blowing up, something like that. I'll be honest, just the word lines gives me horrible flashbacks of having to write them at school, so I probably won't be picking this one up. But if you are a puzzling fan, it might be right down your street. Up your street. <laughs> down. 
down your street, yeah. Or is it up? <laughs> Let's move on. The next game is one Glenn is absolutely delighted to see come into the eShop. He loves these. It's another Chemco RPG called Everdark Tower. And at £3.14, they have finally hit the right price point. When are they going to stop? When are they going to stop? It's just, they're, they're like a disease. They multiply by the day. That comes out on the 23rd, so, you know, put it in your watch list. <laughs> Alright, the next game is called Mr. Blaster with the tagline, Destroy Him, from Forever Entertainment. What is it? It's a fast-paced, casual game set in the colourful cosmic environment with incredibly fun ragdoll physics and easily well-known mechanics. It means nothing to me. What is it? Any ideas, Glenn? I haven't got a Scooby. <laughs> Doesn't explain anything. <laughs> it says it's based on the classics. The classic what? What is the game about? Right, we just watched the trailer, <laughs> and I still don't know what it's about. Do you remember again? Like, do you remember when you bought your Switch? Did you imagine you'd be playing this sort of game on it? I didn't. Look, it looks like Worms in Space, but without any of the bits that made that game good. I don't. I can't. At least you can earn nine gold coins from it. Let's move on, quick. Next up, we have Space Harrier, and these, there's two games from Sega Ages, Space Harrier and Poyo Poyo, which are both games Glenn's going to know a ridiculous amount about, and I'm going to know nothing other than that Space Harrier has a nice red dragon who looks a little bit like a red version of the dog dragon from the never-ending story. Yeah, thanks for that nugget of information, eh? the pearl of wisdom, bloody hell. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> Yeah, so Space Harrier and Puyo Puyo. What I would say, these are both classic games, Space Harrier in particular for me. The one thing I would say about the Sega Ages, as much as I love having them, I really wish they'd hurry up now and get some of the, the ones that we don't see as often out. And I'd say the same with Nintendo with their online NES games that they get out every month. Let's speed it up a bit now. Let's get some of those classics that you don't see as often, please. Does look a bit light. <laughs> The next game is called Milkmaid of the Milky Way and it releases on the 22nd. This looks absolutely fantastic. It's supposedly an award-winning rhyming adventure game, but we were just saying, I mean, if you put a sword in the hand of the main protagonist, it would be Guybrush Freepwood, Mighty Pirate, and that is certainly a compliment. I hope, against hope, most likely, that this really does live up to those games, but by the number of awards it's won and the beautiful art style and the scenes that it goes for, it's got also a bit of a Space Quest vibe to it as well. This is one that I'm going to buy regardless of whether we get a code or not. It looks great to me. What do you reckon, Glenn? I like the fact that it's set in the 1920s in Norway, I think I've just read, which is, you know, which is different. It's only cheap as well. The art style is lovely. So yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Made with passion by one guy from Norway. Fair play to you. Looks lovely. I'm just going to say, it does say that there are, and I like the fact it says it, there are no microtransactions or any other nonsense that you'd find in so many games these days. Good job. Yeah, just on that, as much as I agree with you, it's a good thing. What a sad indictment that they actually have to write these days. No loot boxes within our game. That's not cool, is it? That, that they, ha they have to say it. Do you know what I mean? The fact that it hasn't gotten is good, but... That's sad, isn't it? The next game, Path of Sin Greed from Artifacts Mundi. It's only got Glenn on it on the eShop trope. Look at that! There he is! Suited and booted, he's got a little badge on. My, <laughs> well, that might be. That's a purchase right there for you, isn't it, Glenn? It's like, looks like Harry Potter with a beard, doesn't look like me. He's got his Hogwarts uniform on for. F <laughs> if this was a feel right, it would cut to you and you'd look exactly like Harry Potter with a beard. <laughs> You'd have the little glasses and everything. Amazing. Right, this is another one. They've released a few of these on the Switch. They are point-and-click adventures where you don't have an on-screen character. They're kind of like hidden object games. There are quite a few puzzles to solve within them. Slightly higher asking price of $13.49, but these are generally quite polished. Yeah, my wife likes these sort of games, the hidden object games with the, the point-and-click elements. $13.49 is maybe a little bit too expensive, to be fair. The next game is one that we are reviewing and it's Snooker 19 from Ripstone Publishing. Now, those that have been paying attention, this was released earlier on every other platform, but the Switch has had to wait and that's just fine by me if it looks anything like this eShop depiction because it looks very nice indeed. Yeah, I will be reviewing this one. I downloaded it today, haven't played it yet. Snooker is a game that I don't know a huge amount about. My era of snooker, if you like, was uh, Jimmy White and Stephen Hendry. So I've been out of the game for a while, but I'm really looking forward to this one, yeah.
Which brings us to the end of this week's upcoming games. There are a few nice titles on there and to be fair I think we're probably reviewing the two best titles on this list. Yep, just again as always a quick thank you to our patrons for your continued support. We really do appreciate it and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya! Oh,